I'm Joanne Banco, author, designer, and online educator at Let'sGoSew.com. Today I really want to um, show you how to make some luxurious drapes, add a little bit of luxury to your home decor. You're going to be amazed at how easy these are. So I started with some faux suede. You could use um, any home decor fabric, but there's nothing quite as luxurious as the, the faux suede. It looks beautiful um, when it hangs. You see the subtle shading variations, and it's surprisingly easy to sew. So let me show you um, a few notions and give you a few tips on that to start with. First of all, you're going to hang your rod first. And I've got a complete um, formula for you that um, you'll be able to download from the website that tells you exactly how to measure, what to measure, and how to make your curtains um, come out really, really great. But you always want to make sure you use the same measuring tool throughout. So don't, don't switch tools, because everyone could have just a little different variation on it. And then you, know, you might not get the same measurement at the end that you started with at the beginning. Um, we're going to be using a special foot today that is um, really geared for handling fabrics like this, any kind of fabric that's got a little bit of bulk to it. Um, but if you don't have that foot, I want you to know that a walking foot would be a substitute. But that would you want to have something that's going to just give you a little bit better feeding capability than your normal standard um, presser foot would. Glass head pins. You know, when we sew, and, we, and I do a lot of garment sewing, but in home decor, sometimes we don't think about matching our pins to our fabric. But this fabric is very densely woven, so you want to use um, sharp pins. So I opt for glass head pins. You may also want to consider using clips. You're going to see me in a minute. I've got some of mine um, clipped together. Just makes it really easy, and you don't have to worry about, about pinholes. You want to also use a sharp needle. Now, I found um, the best success on working with this luxury faux suede is to use a super sharp Microtex needle. That needle is not only sharp, but it has a finer, um, a finer tip to it. So size 12 should be just perfect. I was able to sew through everything just fine. So we want to talk just for a second about the fabric again. The um, suede, just like regular suede does have a one way. So if we, we pet the fabric or we brush that nap, one way is going to be very, very smooth. And then the opposite direction, you're going to obviously see the nap change. I like to cut out my pieces with that nap running, with the smooth nap running upward. That gives you a darker um, look to the fabric when it's hanging. If you like the lighter look, that's fine too. But just remember, when you cut out all your panel pieces to mark that. I like to use a little piece of um, painter's tape. So I'm obviously working with it on a very small scale today. Um, the tab curtains that you see here, which they're back tab curtains, which means that that tab is hidden on the back. You see the back here and the front here. That gives a really smooth, sleek look from the front. And it's a, an ideal curtain when um, you want to be able to either tie it back or, or close it fully shut. And it has a little less fullness than, it only has one and a half times fullness. Um, most draperies have a little bit more than that. So it's a little bit, little bit sleeker. Nice for contemporary, but it, it fits just about any, any home decor. So once we have, um, Take a look at that, you're going to see, again, that's about one-third the size of my actual panels in my, in my dining room where these curtains live. So we're going to um, move over to the machine, and I'm going to show you all of the steps to make this. So we're going to start with a panel that has already been hemmed. And again, I'm going to give you all the measurements. You don't have to worry about remembering any of this. Very simple formula. But I like to use a double-turned 4-inch hem. So I've already hemmed this bottom piece. And then the next thing we're going to do is hem the sides. So I have a little, little trick for you today. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, got the Move It um, digital dual feed foot already on the machine. That's the foot that has a belt feed. It's ideal for this kind of fabric. And I'm going to select a basting stitch. Now, why would I select a basing, basting stitch? Well, I want to caution you on this fabric that it's not going to be a fabric that you're going to press like you would a normal, a normal cotton or a blended fabric. So normally, I would press my hems before I stitch it. Watch this trick. I'm going to set it for a basting. I am going to line up the edge of the fabric right along this edge of the throat plate here. And that's going to give me um, almost exactly two inches from the center needle. I'm going to move that needle over with the width key just a little bit. 
lower the presser foot, slide my foot control over here a little bit, and I am gonna baste all along this side edge. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a fold line to follow. This is a great basting stitch because it's really long and really easy to remove at the end. And by moving that needle over just a little bit, what I did is I sewed just a scant distance from that two, two inches so that when I smooth this out, this basting stitch is traditionally loose, I can do a double turned one inch hem without pressing that because I've got that stitch right there along the edge as my fold line. Once I'm done, I'll be able to simply remove that. So you can see I've got this one already finished and I, you get my little tails here. Let me just show you how easy that would be to remove and I've got a perfect turned double um, one inch hem. So I got my bottom hemmed, I've got my side hems on my little mini mini drape here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my tabs and I've um, determined how many I need again by that simple formula and I have sewed my little tabs and turned them right side out so that I've got my seam in the center back. I have placed that against the right side of my drapery panel and I've sandwiched those in between a facing piece. Again, I'll give you the measurements for the facing piece, but that's gonna be flipped to the back side. So I've got all those layers together. Now I'm gonna switch back to a regular stitch and I'm gonna line this up so that I can sew just a normal half inch seam allowance. I am going to increase my stitch length a little bit. Whenever you're working with, move that needle over so I get a half inch. And I like to use this little marker, this guideline here, and send my marker to where my half inch is. Once I've determined that, then I can send my needle over to match. I might need to scoot that over just a little bit. And that's a pretty close match. So now I'm able to stitch that all the way across the top. A half inch is just about right. And you can see from this, this foot what the, the belt is doing is just keeping everything smooth. It is digitally controlled, which means if I'm getting a little bit of puckering on the top or on the bottom, I can make an adjustment for that. So my seams come out really, really nice and smooth and nice and even. Okay, so I've got that already stitched. And you can see my half inch there. When I flip that, I'm gonna need to press that. So I told you you wanna be a little bit careful with this, but it doesn't mean you can't use a press cloth. Just make sure that you press whenever possible from the wrong side, and when you do press from the rest side, right side, press carefully and be sure to use that press cloth. So now I would press all that forward. I would flip that, okay? And then I would simply anchor that down and top stitch that. And I have now got my tabs all finished on the back so they're ready to slide on my curtain. So let's go back over here and take one more good look at the uh, drapery panel here. You can see I also serge finished the edge of my tabs. If you don't have a serger, use an overcasting stitch. That'll be um, quite sufficient. You can use even just an ordinary zigzag. You basically want to just keep that from, um, from fraying and raveling. And then when I'm all finished with that, I'm going to just close up those little sides where that, um, where my uh, tap, my um, facing is. I've got a little, little opening there. And pick a gorgeous rod, slide that on, and you've got beautiful luxury drapes for your home decor. Be sure to visit the website because we've got complete instructions for you. All of the formula is there for you, easy to follow, and you'll have great results.